Hi, I'm Justin Kay, Field Specialist in Horticulture with MU Extension. I'm here today to talk to you about some irrigation water challenges and high tunnels related to alkalinity and soil pH creep. You can see in the picture the yellowing tomato leaves that are showing signs of iron deficiency related to high soil pH that has been influenced by alkaline irrigation water. The problem is that high alkalinity irrigation water adds calcium carbonate, which is the same thing as lime, to soil through your irrigation water. These high alkalinity levels can lead to increased pH of soil and growing media over time. High pH in soil and growing media above 6.8 to 7 can result in micronutrient deficiencies of things like zinc, iron, and manganese. This is a challenge in high tunnels as well as in greenhouse production of transplants in containers. In field production, this excess alkalinity in irrigation water is generally not a concern because rainfall leaches these alkaline elements down into the soil profile away from the root zone. In high tunnels, however, rainfall is excluded and there is no leaching of these alkaline elements. Therefore, if the irrigation water is alkaline, the soil pH will rise over time. You can see in the chart showing availability of different nutrients at different acidity and alkalinity ranges. You can see the red circle, things like magnesium, iron, manganese, boron, copper, and zinc can all have reduced availability when alkalinity rises. Water with high alkalinity always has a pH of greater than 7, but high pH water doesn't always have high alkalinity. Testing for your irrigation water for suitability is the only way to know. You can submit samples through the MU Soil Testing Lab to find out. There's a $40 test for irrigation suitability, and you'll need to submit a 16 ounce sample. In terms of the levels of concern with alkalinity and irrigation water, the desirable range is between zero to 100 ppm of calcium carbonate, and levels between 30 and 60 are desirable for most plants. With levels higher than 100 ppm, acidification of irrigation water may be justified to reduce alkalinity. This is really important for transplant production. In transplant production, the pH of growing media can change very quickly because there's little buffering capacity as there might be in soil. However, in high tunnel soils, acidification of irrigation water may still be justified to maintain adequate soil pH. You can also adjust a soil pH in high tunnels using elemental sulfur, but you'll only want to do this based on soil test recommendations. The thing about this is it's going to take six months to lower your soil pH after the sulfur is incorporated. There's a great tool called OutCalc from University of New Hampshire that allows you to determine how much acid to be injected based on the alkalinity of your irrigation water and what you want that end alkalinity to be. So you can see here, I've submitted a sample in this online alkalk form with a pH of eight, alkalinity of 150 ppm calcium carbonate, which is outside of the desired range, the target alkalinity of 30 ppm calcium carbonate, which is within the desired range. We just then click submit sample, and we'll get some information here about the alkalinity before acid addition, as well as the alkalinity after, targeting that ppm of calcium carbonate of 30. And you can see it'll give you recommendations for different acid types like phosphoric, sulfuric, and nitric. But you can see here for the PPM of calcium carbonate or alkalinity that we've picked as our desired range, we can use phosphoric acid at 75%. And with a 1 to 100 injector, we'll want to add 2.5 fluid ounces per gallon to our stock tank solution. There's also other information for different ratios of injectors with this tool. Here are some of the resources that you might want to check out. There's a great article from Pennsylvania State University on a study of high tunnel growers and their challenges with irrigation water. There's also a link here to our soil and plant testing laboratory if you'd like to submit a sample for water analysis. And the third link goes over some of the details of irrigation water suitability and what the different values in your water test mean. We'll include these links in the description to the YouTube video. If you have any questions about this, feel free to email me at the email below.